All right, well, welcome back, everybody, to GTFO Plan. Uh, we know it's been a while, but obviously, if you're paying attention to the various sailing channels, uh, we have great, wonderful, awesome news with regards to the first hull Yay. of the splashing complete. And as many of you know, as you go back through our past videos, you know exactly which boat we picked. But if you don't, go back and watch our boat review videos. Every boat we reviewed, we sailed that boat or a sister version. So we are exceptionally excited, especially after the recent video that uh, Phil put out with regards to doing a walkthrough of the 4A2. And we just wanted to share some of the thoughts um, that we have with regards to that walkthrough in terms of why you can see why we chose this boat. Yeah, it's so exciting because we put money down on this boat, non-refundable, a year and a half ago and never have seen this hull. But now hull number one is out, yeah. golden hour. And we have such exciting news, but we're not going to tell you right now. That's right. You have to wait until the Annapolis Fall Boat Show. Yes. Um, in October, Saturday, October 16th, Correct. to be exact, yes. we are going to have a big surprise for all of you. Can't yeah. wait to share yeah. it. So, on to the video, but first we want to recognize one of our viewers, uh, Bert McDonald. Thank you, thank you very much yes. for being a consistent contributor to our comments. Uh, good discussion, good encouragement, we appreciate all that. Great uh, So thank you, and hopefully someday we'll get a chance to, to meet and uh, we'll buy you a beer. Or two. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Yeah, we thank you to all our viewers um, and all the feedback. Uh, we feel like you're on this journey with us and helping us, and you come up with ideas that we haven't even thought absolutely, of. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just a great community. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and, and some of those ideas or thoughts are, um, what options did you guys pick? Uh, yes. How are you financing this boat? And there are yes. some videos that we're going to work on for future yes. episodes. Uh, but yeah, thank you for the feedback. Keep the ideas coming because. Like, like Ann just said, I mean, you feel like you're part of the process with us. And I know many of you out there have a similar idea. Uh, we want to help you transition that idea to a yes. plan. Uh, Everybody so can, needs a GTFO plan. That's right. So some of the quick specifications as to why we really went down the 482 path. Um, yeah. Price not worth standing. But, um, the, 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 <laughs> well, that was a big reason. Yes, yeah, so a huge reason. Money, money, money. Yeah. But the beam of the boat is just under 26 feet. And the vast majority of travel lifts out there are right at 26 feet. So if there's ever a need for a haul out, we have a lot more opportunities uh, at, at our disposal to, to haul the boat out if we need to. Now, I think the industry is moving towards more catamarans, uh, so more marinas are building more lifts, but that's not necessarily always the case in other countries or remote areas. Uh, so you get what you get. Specifically, it is 25 feet 9 inches for the beam, and then for the length, it's 48 feet 0.2. Six, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Two, six, but. yeah. So with any boat, you know, when you first step on, especially the catamaran, you're coming into the cockpit right off the bat. So that's going to be your first impression of the boat. It's one of the reasons we love this boat so much, uh, is that there's a lot of seating area in and around uh, the cockpit area. Lots of areas for lounging, so you can have lots of people aboard. Yeah, there are four places to lounge. You have one above where the cockpit table is, kind of up higher, and then, of course, along the cockpit table. Then you have another lounge area behind the helm seat, and then, of course, one in the back. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a catamaran with four places to lounge. Yeah, it's got great use of space. Yeah. And I think the other thing that Fantastic. adds to it is if you have the nice weather for it, um, is you can drop that cockpit table and it can double as a big lounge area, a big lounge right. seat, or even a, another double bed. Well, uh, and because you can swivel the TV from the salon to face the cockpit, mm -hmm. that could be your place to do movies. Yeah, there's your movie No night. need to do yeah. a big screen or have some extra stuff to set up. Right, You just right. Right. swivel that yeah. TV in. And the other thing, too, is, I mean, it's going to be put a full enclosure around it. Yeah, um, definitely. What we've seen in one of the other enclosure. boats is... From where the traveler was positioned, you had to have a lot of cutouts to just even get your enclosure put together. So it left a lot of gaps. 
Uh, and I don't think we'll necessarily see that with, with this arrangement. Um, so having a more seamless enclosure, right. less it's elements well coming in. Out, yeah, it's unlike the sea wind. Um, <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and as you know, a big criteria for us is the fully shaded. We need to have shade. What sold us, obviously, with this boat is the Versa Helm. The first time we saw the Versa Helm on the 526, we were, we thought this was genius. A lot of other manufacturers yeah. are starting to copy it. Yeah. Because having a protected helm yeah. is a very big deal for us. You're going to have crappy weather, and to have that protected helm and all that shade, we won't have to use a ton of sunscreen because we can hang out. We right. plan to have a place to hang our hammock. Yeah. And again, that'll be in a shaded spot. No rigging any sheets up or anything like that to get right. the shade. And, and up on the underside of the coach roof, you're going to have some mounts, some brackets or straps. I don't remember exactly which. Right. Um, but you can hang a kayak. You can hang a surfboard. You can hang sups. sups yeah. Uh, other things that you might want to hang up there. But we'll talk more about that when we talk about our options. That yeah, right, choose. right. Uh, now, the other thing we really liked, uh, again, Ann mentioned the Versa Helm, and that was probably one of the big deciding factors for going with balance. Uh, on the 526, as you transition from the cockpit to the salon, there's a big post. Well, they've re-engineered that, and that post is now gone on the 482. So your transition from the cockpit to the the salon is even just that much more it's open. It's so wide open. Yeah. I actually, Beautiful. I love this so much, that open look. That's one of the things we loved about the Neo 51. Very open transition between the cockpit and the salon, which is going to be your primary entertainment area. Absolutely. So as you transition into the salon, as we mentioned, the TV is on a swivel, but the nice thing is that it also allows you to duplicate your charts, so you can use that as another visual to see. And then of course, because of that table dropping, yeah. you have a nice big spacious bed for passages, for crew, but you can also make that a movie night location as well. Oh yeah, great movie night location. And it's a three cabin boat because one hall is the owner's hall, but the fact that you have two other places where you can drop the tables down, that gives you two more beds. Absolutely. So that is just great flexibility. Yeah. The galley is great. Um, oh, yeah. It's coming with two fridge freezer combos, so two on each side with a total of four drawers. Yeah, so you can do any combination you want. You could have one freezer, three fridges, two and two, whatever you need, and you can switch them. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, great flexibility. With the sink, the one thing that's really nice, uh, they have, again, another thought-out feature. They have a cutting board that fits right in there and a little drainage. So a lot of your dishes, you just when you're done washing them, that drain is right at the bottom of the sink. We love that feature. We have that in the house, yeah. and yeah. it's going to be very handy to have yeah. on the boat. And because the boat comes with lithium-ion batteries, uh, our choice is that we're going to go all electric, so we'll have an induction cooktop. Uh, even the grill, we intend to make it electric that's out in the cockpit. Yes. Uh, too many horror stories of trying to find propane and then when you do find it, the fittings don't match. Uh, yeah. So we want to illuminate that. Of course, the obvious reason propane can be dangerous. Explosive <laughs> gas, which we had a near miss with one time in our current boat, but that's yeah. another story. <laughs> um. <laughs> Your favorite part. Yes. Um, the nav station, again, with Tablets and everything else, uh, traditional nav station has kind of gone out. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to put there is a really nice keyboard. Yeah. And um, rather than having a keyboard tucked down in a hull where it's darker, it, this is out in the open, part of the main space, and, you know, with a nice view. Yeah, absolutely. Just so excited. Yeah. So again, that makes that salon area, that centralized area where you spend the bulk of your time, if not out in the cockpit. Um, the other thing, too, as you can see, is tons of storage, uh, drawers underneath the seats. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So usually when you have to access the storage under your salon seats, you have to lift up the cushion and a fingerboard and, and to get right. in there. But in the front, it doesn't access the whole thing, but they have actual drawers. Well thought out. Way to go balance. I yeah. love that. Another thing they really did great with, um, so there's this large brow over the big windows, 
And so you could have those little hatches open mm -hmm. for ventilation and still not get green in. Yeah. So Absolutely. that is very nice. Our current boat, we have to close it completely <laughs> up when it rains, and then it's just a stuffy, yeah, moist it is. sauna. It's a nice big brow across the front of the boat. <laughs> So now as you come down into the porthole, the first thing you're going to notice is that you still have that 6 foot 10 clearance overhead. Um, so that's great that they've kept that. Now the holes are a little bit narrower because it is a performance boat and that's a trade-off obviously that you don't want to lose. Yes. When you go into the cabins, well you'll notice first tons of storage. Again, this is not like your traditional charter catamaran. You have storage galore all over the boat and we love that. I also love that they have two large, what's the brand of the fan? Uh, Whatever. Yeah. We'll, we'll post them in the comments. Yeah. Anyway, two large fans that really push air and we can, it's kind of like the his and her fans. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, a difference from the 526 is that the head and the shower are separated. Right. Uh, again, because it's a smaller boat, right? It's a 48, not a 52. But we, again, is this is a feature we like yeah. better than the 526 because your shower is separate. Someone could be taking a shower, yet your head and sink are available for someone else. Right, exactly. So, exactly. fantastic. Yeah, that's going to work out great. Um, the other feature, too, especially in the uh, that forward cabin, is one, the hatch is directly overhead. So uh, the airflow is coming down. The airflow is phenomenal. Yeah. But if you have to shut that hatch, like when it's raining, you still have that hatch open and the forward hatch, so you get airflow in and no rain. And it's secure enough to leave open when you leave the boat, so you don't have you can still have some airflow. Yeah, absolutely. Without worrying about someone going onto your boat yep. uninvited. Absolutely. So moving to the other side of the boat, the starboard hull, the owner's side, yes, our side, yes. Uh, again, huge, spacious, lots of storage, um, and you can see the, how how large the shower area is. Uh, yeah. And not that we need all the space for taking a shower; we we'll probably do most of that up on deck. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a good area when you have things that are wet. Yes, that you can you know use it as a bit of a wet locker in right. some regards. Hang everything there, let it drip dry. You also have your washer and dryer in this hull, so that's extra handy, uh, and it keeps the weight centered. Yeah, and again, easy accessibility to a lot of the systems. Whether I think I think some of the holding tank pumps are on that side. Uh, again, the access to the pulley pulleys for the for the helm controls. Right, right. It's just it's right there. You're not digging around looking for stuff. Yeah, again, well thought out because you are going to have to access these things. You're going to have to repair it. And again, a lot of production catamarans do not consider this type yeah. of stuff. In other boats, it would be more of a vanity area, uh, but it does have the little shelf desk that would be great for, you know, putting your printer. Because yeah. when you go to different places, yeah. you probably got to have triplicate copies of everything uh, as you <laughs> yes. get ready to clear customs and all that kind of stuff. So. You know, but that's not something you want to have up in your cockpit area yeah. or your salon area necessarily. It's uh, not so something you're accessing all the time. Yeah, it keeps the clutter down. Right, right. And again, you have the his and her fans, and they're big, decent sized fans. They pivot, they move, so you have a lot of options to push that air around. Now, what you also see on the forward portion is there's a door, which is also unique. I don't think I've seen that yet on another catamaran. No, we um, love this door. Right, and what some of the owners are doing is that's going to be either a workshop area, a tool mm -hmm. shop. Um, you can see along the side is areas for hanging lines. Yes. Um, I think they have that on the other side too, but not the door. Correct, they don't have the door. Right. Um, right, and so, you know, we're trying to think of ways to, uh, to best utilize that storage area. But what's nice is 
not only do you access that area from outside with the overhead hatch, yes. but now if it's a big, bulky, weird kind of size thing, it's just another little space for storage. And we want to mention that the beds will post the dimensions, but they are larger than a queen. That's usually, that's very rare in a performance mm -hmm. boat. And I think that's the advantage, the trade-off, having the athwart ship bed. We love the recessed mood ring. <laughs> they have this in every cabin, and it just, again, gives you that really nice ambiance setting. Yep. All right, so moving Oops. aft. There you will. Now moving to the aft cabin, I think the first thing that you'll notice is just the amount of light that comes in because of that nice big window yes. uh, at the back end. Right you don't up against, feel closed in. Right, you don't feel closed in. Yeah. Uh, and then you, because you also have nice side windows, and then of course the overhead hatch again. Now, I don't believe on Golden Hour they opted for that hatch over the aft berth. Okay. But, um, they're, they're, again, it's trade-off. Some people don't like having that hatch because when you walk forward, that's a hazard. You could step into it. Right. But for us, again, since we're going to be at anchor the ma vast majority of the time, right. we would rather have that airflow. To the outside, the up, mainly up forward on the foredeck area, um, so you can just see all the wonderful features that are up here as well. Yes. So for the stanchions, you notice they're black. That is actually black anodized aluminum. So you got the lightweight, but you don't actually have the expense of carbon carbon fiber, which <laughs> right. insurance companies are very reluctant yeah. to insure these really, like the gunboat, the really high fi carbon fiber. So yeah. you get the benefits of lightweight without that issue. Yeah. And that's, this is not a carbon boat. It's a carbon reinforced in certain areas right. to strengthen, right. uh, you know, different components of the boat structurally. But yeah. yeah. And if you notice the stainless, it's stainless steel, but it's a brushed, so you don't get the water spots that you tend yeah. to get on a shiny stainless. Yeah. So that is really cool. Yeah, totally. The cleats have chafe plates. That yeah. is something you don't normally think about. And when your boat is alongside a dock, they have a place to actually step. Again, that was well thought out balance. Yeah, I very really good. like that. Very good. Another thing we really like. I remember we were trying to hook up the downwind sail on Footloose. Mm -hmm. They actually have attachment points when you're doing downwind sailing, so you don't have to add extra things. It's already there for right. you, which is well thought out and something we see ourselves using yeah, a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. And even in the best of conditions, you know, you always got to have one hand for the boat. Uh, there's there's good placement of handrails um, yes. throughout throughout the outside exterior. Yes. Yeah, so the handrail then transitions to this channel. So not only does that give you a way to hold on all the way as you move forward, mm -hmm. but you can use that to catch water, say if your water maker is out. Yeah. And that is a great thing if you're on a passage and you lose your water maker, you still have a way to get fresh water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Love it. So cool. You notice the solar panels actually have a gap underneath. That's because solar panels get very hot. So that increases their efficiency. And each solar panel is hooked up to its own controller. Yeah. So if you have one solar panel that has shading and that's not getting a high efficiency, that doesn't affect all the other solar right. panels. Uh, something else that we like too is that the hatches up on the roof area face forward. So you're actually catching all that air. Yeah. Uh, again, because when you're at anchor, on the morning, you're into the wind, and that's getting that ventilation going. Yeah, we can't get over the number of boats we've seen where hatches face backward. You are not going to pick up the wind. No. The difference between the 526 and the 482 is that the 526 dagger boards completely recess. Yes. And that's nice. That looks beautiful that you have this clean uh, deck area. But we're okay with the dagger boards coming up. Right. Um, but another nice feature, though, too, well, because is, when the dagger boards are all the way down, since you can still see them a little bit, you don't forget about them. Exactly. It's that visual reminder. Yeah, exactly. So we actually like that trade-off of having it show on deck. Yep, that's exactly right. And then, again, there's plenty of storage up front for your sails, fenders, 
aft of the trampolines, they have these compartments that open up, which would be great to put your fenders. Right. Because a lot of times the fenders on catamarans are way down in that forward locker and you're reaching down in there trying to grab yeah. them. And with our backs, we love this feature. And they have cushions that go on yeah. there. So it's a great place to hang the out. That. The princess seats, uh, they actually face forward. Yes. Uh, again, a lot of catamarans kind of turn them at a 90 right. degree angle that you're facing each other or right. facing towards the back of the you're boat. You're always going to be facing forward. Yeah, you want to you want to face seat. forward. Yeah, yeah so. we love that. And then if you notice the um, that centerpiece, la, la, the lingeron. lingeron, it's lingeron. Um, <laughs> it's really flush with the trampoline and the trampoline netting doesn't sink in too much. We've been on some catamarans where you step on the trampoline netting and you go so far down, yeah. I just can't imagine in any kind of rough sea state right. walking across. Right. And we'll probably do a separate video just on the trampolines because we have some some ideas on that we'd yeah. like to share with yeah. you and get your feedback. And, and it's a solid piece going forward mm -hmm. uh, up to uh, well, your, your bow pulpit, if you will. I mean, you know, I'm talking about the center of the boat where the where your head stay, your poor stay, connect uh, and that's nice because when you're walking on that of course you're going to be barefoot uh, and a lot of other boats they're either very small um, mm -hmm. yeah it's just easy to go forward again safety and then I love at the at the mast all your lines you they go down in you don't have this big mess of lines yeah. again well thought out but you can get access to them in case you do need mm -hmm. it yeah um, another winch right up there by the mast yes uh, with controls and of course you have your electric windlass. Yeah. No, no more, more powering through it, I know. <laughs> Lifting Dennis lifts our anchor on our current tendonitis boat. Tendonitis and my finger button on my big toe. <laughs>
in your galley all over the place because under passage you can end up with some good bruising. Another thing I think is, as you saw the door to the four peak area on the owner's side, Yes. let's put one on the other side as well um, because as I mentioned, you know, if you have bigger bulky kind of goofy sized items that won't fit through the overhead hatch, but maybe you can get it in yes. through that way as well. Probably taking most of our showers on the sugar scoop, we'd like to see a little mount point of some sort where you can have a shower. Mostly minor <laughs> things, not deal breakers, yeah. but we hope Balance will consider adding these to future hauls. Thank you for watching yes. today. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, looking forward to making more videos uh, on just some of the suggestions that you've made. Maybe some of you we will see at the Fall Boat Show. All right. Well, thank you everybody for watching and join us next week. Should make our own video. <laughs> <laughs>